Yet another optimization using paging hardware is demand paging. Here's the idea. Let's say you've got an L file. So your L file has a bunch of code in it. Right, so let's say this is the, the text segment, which contains all the code. And we've got a bunch of code in here. We've got some init code. We've got some termination code. We've got some code that if the user puts in the minus calc pi flag, calculates pi. So we've got some calculating pi code. But that's a pretty unusual option, rarely used. But there's a lot of code. And we've got some, let's say, regular code. So in most cases, when the, when the process runs, it runs the initialization code, and then it runs the regular code, and then it runs the termination code. Every once in a while, if the write flag is set and the phase of the moon is set, then it'll run the initialization code and the regular code, but it'll also run the calculation pi code and the termination code. So this is a fairly unused option, but there's a lot of code to it. Currently what happens when we run, we load this all into memory. So we've got our process. We've got our code here, and we've got pointers. And let's just say, for the sake of argument, that these happen to drop under page boundaries, even though that really won't be the case. But so we have a page, let's say, of init code. We have a page of termination code. We have a page of regular code. We have many pages. Must have a very poor algorithm for calculating pi if we need lots of pages of code, but let's ignore that. So the question is, does this make sense? Is this efficient? And the answer is no. There's a lot of this code that's just never used when we run this process, like all this calculating pi code. Right? You can imagine for any big program, there's lots of code that isn't used in particular in, uh, runs of the, of the process. If you think of Excel, it has so many different options. Right? Some of them, I probably only use 10 or 20% of Excel, so I'm sure there's a large fraction of the code that just is never executed for runs of Excel that I do. So how can we optimize this? Well, the idea is don't load code that's not needed. That seems like a reasonable idea, but how do we know which code is needed? And the answer is that you know code is needed when it's called. So when you start up the process, don't load the code. That is, we are going to instead, if we think about the page table entries for the code, we're going to mark them as not present. And as we start to execute our program, we're going to get a page fault, right? Because it's going to use the EIP, and it's going to try to go to one of these addresses where the beginning of the code is, and there is no page table entry, or rather it's invalid. And so then what will happen? We'll get a page fault, and the kernel says, oh, I know where this address is within this procedure. That is within the code segment. And I know the offset within the code segment, and I know where that was in the ELF file. So if I need this particular page here, I can go ahead and go to the ELF file and read it. And it happens to be, let's say, it's here. And so I will read this page, demand paging it in. And so this will now point at a page that happens to consist of the initial code for the process. It starts running, it does some stuff, and all of a sudden it starts to call some other code that's on a different page. We get a page fault exception. Sorry, once we load this initialization code, of course, we better go ahead and mark this now as present. Present and readable. It's running. Eventually, it tries to access an instruction that's outside of this page. We get a page fault exception because they're not present. We go to the kernel. The kernel says, again, whatever this EIP is, I know the offset within the code. That tells me from the ELF file 
where I need to go, and I will go load that code from there. So we load that into the memory. So this is the next page needed. So, and that's maybe this one here, and we mark that as present. So the program is going to run, and the trace of instructions that gets generated is going to cause us to be going through certain pages within the code segment, and those are exactly the ones that are going to be loaded into memory, and no other ones. So if this particular run of the procedure didn't need this code, the pages for that code wouldn't be loaded. It's possible some of the code might be loaded because it's on a page that has code that was executed. But if there are any pages which have no instructions that were executed, those pages won't get loaded. A couple things to think about. Uh, thing number one is that the way we normally think about it, when you run your program, your program gets loaded in memory. That is, it gets copied at the time it's initialized. And then the L file gets closed. And then your process goes on its merry way. And so it has no relationship with the executable file on disk that started it. Here, however, with the demand paging, we still need this ELF file even once we started our program because we may need to be going back to get code at any point. And so therefore, we would keep the file open. Okay. So instead of opening the file, reading the stuff all out, initializing the proc, and then closing the file, we are instead are going to read, the read some of the stuff from the file, like all the data uh, information, where the code segments are and so on, initialize that information, and then keep that file open so that we can do this demand paging. So we can go back at any time and read from the file. What would happen if the file got closed, sorry, got removed while we were running? So if I got to remove the Microsoft Excel executable while I'm actually running Microsoft Excel, not put it to the trash, actually remove it from the file system. Uh, in Unix, that all works. And the reason is, if you remove a file, the contents of the file are still there as long as there are any open file descriptors to the file. So if you have a file descriptor, that file descriptor remains valid until you close the file descriptor, even if the file is removed, because it still stays on disk, even though it's no longer in the directory. We'll talk about this when we talk about file systems. So that takes care of the problem with someone removing the file out from under you, uh, although it doesn't doesn't deal with what if someone rewrote the file, right? Someone did, let's say, a compile and, and recompiled and relinked this file and the code changed. That would be a bad, a bad situation. Um, the other question is, what happens if your code is larger than the amount of physical memory you have? Well, that gets in to this idea of virtual memory, where we might have more address space than we have pages. And the idea is just something like this. The idea would be, well, you've got this code. Why don't we just keep track of which pages have been used and which not been used? For instance, the initialization code may never be used again. So maybe we haven't used this, this page for a long, long time. And therefore, we can just go ahead and free it. If, and mark this again as not present. If we ever need something on this page, we can just reload it from the executable. So that would allow us to have maybe instead of all of the pages of code that we've read from so far in the program, let's just keep the set of pages of code that we've recently used. And any that have been far in the past, we'll just go ahead and let them be reused. So we might have a sort of what we would call a working set of pages that are the ones that are actually currently being used. And the old ones, we don't care about. So in that case, what we're really looking at is the physical memory is a cache for the alpha file, for the code in the alpha file. We'll talk a lot more about this idea of getting rid of pages that haven't been used recently and reloading them when we talk about virtual memory.